I was flying to see Air Sea Rescue that uh, that morning, and uh, I was directed to uh, take off and fly up to a, a little island right off the uh, north uh, west coast of New Guinea. So we got a call. Our plane did that. There was one plane down, and they gave us the latitude and longitude where the plane was. So I started over there to where they were, and we, we got to the place where he said it was, but there wasn't any plane there. If it had been a plane there, you know, you'd seen some debris, some oil, some, some die marker, or life jacket, or life raft, or something. You'd seen something. Right after we then, uh, after that, well, we started flying closer to New Guinea. About that time, the plane came up and said, uh, if you follow me, I'll lead you to where somebody's down. And it was uh, one of the B-25s that was making the uh, attack on Kabyang. And uh, some of them got uh, knocked down by their own stuff being knocked up in the air and hit, and hit some of the planes. So anyway, this guy came to this place and he dived down. And there was a, there was no plane there. And I didn't see anybody, but I saw this life raft, which was partially sunk. I saw two life jackets, which were floating. There was nobody in them. And I saw all this other debris around. So in order to be sure, I, you know, I, sometimes those pilots hide under those things because they think that they don't know what kind of plane it is with them that is flying over them. So they, get under that. And so I thought, well, the heck, I've just got to stop and see. Well, the, uh, the Army said that, that the swells were 18 feet. I thought they were about 15 feet, but of course, either one's pretty high. And you don't want to be landing then if you can keep running. So uh, I landed then and, uh, and checked it out, but there wasn't anybody alive. The plane had gone down and everybody went with them. The takeoff is as bad or worse than the landing. You're going through a sea, it's a rough sea, and uh, you get your speed up. At the time, maybe you get to 35 knots if you'll hit the top of one of those breakers. It'll throw you up 20 or 30 or 40 feet in the air. And because you haven't got your airspeed up, then what do you do? You come back and wham, you hit that water down. <laughs> And I had popped a bunch of rivets, I don't know how many, several, but not enough to where we just would get the boys whenever we had a moment to and get them get buckets and have them put the water, you know, over. But uh, that didn't wear us too much. So about the time I got in the air, I had another call. I think it was from the same plane, I'm almost sure it was. Uh, it's fine if he didn't hit B-25, and he said, well, I've got another plane down over here. He said, follow me and I'll just take you over there. So uh, he took me over there and there was a, there was six people there on the raft. I dropped in there and uh, pulled over to them and and of course uh, you've got to be careful with those large whales. They could have f flopped them up under my props, you know. Uh, but anyway, we threw, threw a line out to them, and then they grabbed the line. And we were supposed to pull, and they were supposed to pull. And we'd been in the water quite a while, and I so I called my boy Jack, uh, co-pilot. I put him back there to, to keep charge of things on the back of the rear, and I said, well, what's wrong, Jack? He said, Nathan, you're going to have to cut your engines. We can't get them out. Well, what had happened, of course, I had my engine pulled back and forward. I'd get them, but of course, I was making speeds, and we just couldn't pull them in the boat. I had to cut my engine, which wasn't very good. I didn't like it, because you, sometimes they just don't start you, know, for various reasons. I had a big old boy named Joe Jamo back there in the back of a big old boy. He had, his arms were bigger than my legs. And I told Jack to get him back there, because you had to have somebody who could. And there's one boy I just noticed that I was looking through some of the stuff. Said somebody had just picked him up with a hair and pulled him in, which he did. This is old big, big old boy Joe Camo. He just picked him up with a hair and lifted him right up in, in the uh, in the rear end there. Bless her. Anyway, we got those in, and we took off again. Same problems with taking off as before, and uh, 
there was some gunfire. We wouldn't get to, right close to us, but they was getting around us. And we got in the air then, and uh, gosh, I'd hardly got in the air, and the same guy came back again. <laughs> <I'm getting laughs> and uh, he says, uh, follow me, I got another plane down. So we took we over to that one. This was a plane, was, they were all getting closer to shore all the time. And there were only three people around it. We picked those up and didn't have any particular problem. And uh, like I said, the fire was getting a lot heavier. I couldn't get my port engine started. So uh, uh, I wasn't very happy about that because you can't take off with one engine. Uh, so uh, uh, we let her cool off a few minutes. And uh, I had my port in, I mean, my starboard didn't just start, we just going around in a circle, of course, you know, because you, cause you can't go straight with one engine. And uh, so we let it uh, cool off a minute, and then we tried it again, and it started. And, and so we took off. And uh, that was when I started, but I thought we were through. I did, he hadn't told me about any more other planes of being around, and so I started back for the base. And uh, it got quite a distance away. I'm just guessing to miles, 20, 30 miles. And I had another call from the same plane that had been there before. He told me he had another plane down, uh, just offshore, he said. And uh, I thought for a minute, I said, well, darn, I've gotten, I've got my crew. I picked up. What, nine people, I guess. Uh, all my fighters forces left me. I am trying to cover for me. So, uh, anyway, I thought a minute, but no, the hell, I can't leave them. So uh, I turned around and went back up there, and there were six this time. These were the ones that were closest shore. They were, I think, they, they say 600 yards, which was about right, I guess. It was pretty close. And uh, the only way that I could make the landing that I thought where I could have the best chance of coming out alive with it was to make an approach from over the shore. Uh, but they had all their guns up over the shore, and, uh, uh, and you know, so you're really taking a risk running up through there. But I thought, well, I've got to do it that way. Made a turn, never to get shot at. Came around, never to get shot at. Came out and landed about 600 yards offshore. And then they just started opening fire on us. And I don't know why, they could, it's just why they couldn't see me. Or I, I thought maybe it was because I was so low, maybe that they, they didn't have a chance to get, get on me, I don't know. But anyway, we landed this, this time and didn't have any serious problems with landing. And, uh, we got the six aboard, and uh, uh, oh, the, the, you know, Bill was just cutting up the water all around. I, only way I could think they could miss was the color was the waves so high that they never did shoot us. Anyway, got all, all them on there and took off, and just as I took off, why, well, it just, uh, the froth of, <laughs> fire right behind me and it never did catch up, catch up with me. Flew on back to Finchhaven, which was a, uh, a bay down there just off the, it was on the New Guinea coast. So we landed and we got all the boys on. And like I said, some of them were, had some pretty severe fractures. Uh, but they all seemed in good spirits. And we got them on the tender and then I think the tender then there was an army base not too far from there where the king got them in and took them to there where they had uh, hospital facilities, I think. Not, none of them died, so I was not told.